Hey guys, Wave618 here. It is the 27th of July 2020 and we're going to do a Bitcoin update. So it would be absolutely criminal not to do an update today. We have seen a huge move on Bitcoin. It's a thousand dollar move as I speak. So the day started at 99.50 and we're literally found the high of the day at $10,950. Absolutely humongous move. Is it the part of a bigger move to the upside? That's what we're going to discuss in today's video and we'll go in detail about basically where i anticipate price going to i'm looking at it going to roughly 16k and i believe it's going to be a pretty fast paced move up to 16k i'll be justifying that in this video i'll talk also about where i expect it to go from there and i'll also give a lot of reasoning for that also so we're going to break this chart down we're going to look at price we're going to look at time and we're going to look at sentiment these are the three main elements that any chart will give you so we're going to use all of the resources available to us on top of that we'll look at correlating charts correlating assets and that's going to give us a better picture of where bitcoin is going long term so if interested then stay tuned All right, guys, absolutely incredible day that we've seen before us. And um, yeah, I'm going to hopefully uh, put a bit of rationale behind the chart, what we've seen here. Uh, as you'll know, if you've watched my videos, I'm a, basically I try to give a very objective view on Bitcoin. I don't care whether this market goes up or down. I will trade it in either direction. Yeah, I really don't care. I don't uh, trade spot Bitcoin. I trade on the a spread betting account very similar to um, CFD trading so as you know with that it's traded on margin and you can bet on price going up or down so as I say I really don't mind which way it goes uh, and basically once price reached this point here I was I had my bias switched to to bullish and uh, I'll explain the reason for that as we move on but basically to summarize 9833 was a huge level that needed to be overcome and I've said for a good while now whilst price is going sideways between 9833 being the top of the range and the bottom of the range being roughly 8700 which was where our 50 week simple moving averages as long as we're between those two levels you know there was no major breakout there yeah, no confirmation that this consolidation had finished and now finally we've seen ourselves break out above 9833 you can see if we bring on volume, a very nice spike in volume corresponding with the, with the direction of the candle, giving confirmation and validation to that candle, suggesting that it is a breakout to the upside and probably the start of a much bigger move on its way up. All right, so just removing volume. So yeah, very nice breakout to the upside. Now, as you know, three main indicators that I will use when assessing a chart will be Elliott wave, pitchforks, and horizontal levels also. Now, the key horizontal level is 9833. Where did I pluck that figure from? So basically it's the halfway mark between zero and the all time high at 19666. So that was our all time high. That's basically our 50% level. And you can see it's tested this level many, many times. Yeah, if we go look left across the chart, you can see round here, tested it many, many times went just above it here and then failed and now we've gone above it pretty significantly yeah and i think now we it is going to use as a plat be used as a platform to take us higher okay so it's an absolutely humongous level um that it's overcome okay now this move up going into this sideways range did not look impulsive at all okay it looks very overlappy yeah very overlappy indeed in fact, it, was, it wasn't so easy to give a count. I mean, I've given it a WXY count. Yeah, that's the, probably the best count I can give for it. So that was your three waves up to make your W, then got your, your flat X, and then you got your three waves up to here. All right, so that's W. And then I believe everything that happened over the last three months was our X wave. It was a complex X wave. And I'll explain the small account on that in a moment. But now basically I'm expecting the Y wave being another corrective pattern, probably some kind of ABC going up to around 16k and i'll talk about that target in just a moment basically breaking down this consolidation over the last three months i think the best way you can look at it 
and certainly it is complex and i'm certainly open to people discussing alternative Elliott wave counts because it is complex indeed but i see this as an expanding pattern here so that's your expanded flat uh, to make your w then we've got your zigzag move up here to make your x and then the y wave i have is a w x y x z so if you look at the subwave counts of these moves that is three down that's three up that's three down that's three up and that was three down yeah so i'm giving that a w x y x z count yeah so that's your termination of your w x y to finish your x wave here and then that allowed for this to be called as a low and that allowing us to start the the next major y wave as i say targeting around 16k all right now if we just take a look at volatility a moment we're on the daily time frame let's just pull up bollinger bands here so basically what we had you can see how we've been funneling the uh, bollinger bands here it really came very very tight and now we've literally broken out of the upper bollinger band very considerably and that's basically last time we saw this really tight funnel we saw the same thing play out so here was the last time it really funneled very tight let's expand it a little bit what it does is it really flies to the upside yeah completely takes out the upper bollinger band and then it'll go sideways for a while and then it will just go absolutely rip roaring higher after that yeah and it actually just continues so it has these cool off periods and then continues higher again yeah so there are opportunities to join the upward trend later on but as you can see, once you break the upper Bollinger Band, there is often a bit of a cool off period. And I think that's where, where we're at at present. So you may see a little bit of a cool off at present. Um, but yeah, basically what we were having here uh, was your, your highs here. And then you had your, your higher lows. Yeah. And surprise, surprise, whenever you get your flat line, that is generally the line that breaks. So you get your very, you get your reduced volatility, then you break to the upside and it follows it breaks basically the flat line yeah and the same thing happened here so you had your descending um, highs here's your flat line here was your funnel yeah eventually we break it break the bollinger band to the downside cool off break it once more and yeah it would basically broke to the flat side and that's exactly what we've been seeing right now so basically if we look at this consolidation we had quite clearly our lows getting higher as we went along and then there was your flat line yeah so sorry for the uh, curvature of this line it's meant to be a straight line um, but there that was one thing that was telling you that there was buying pressure coming in we were hitting our horizontal resistance time and time again at 9833 price struggling to get above it each time it came down it didn't come down quite as far why because the buying pressure was getting stronger all right so Let's just clean up the chart a little bit. Okay, so that was Bollinger Bands. Just want to have a quick look at the ATR also. So this is your average true range. Sorry, bear with me. So you can see here, we came down to $200 here on the ATR. So that was the lowest point for the year. Yeah, for 2020, that was your lowest ATR. So it really came down pretty damn low. And we have... We have then done a thousand dollar move after that so you can see now we are going to start trending up here with the volatility coming in coming back into this market so i do expect it is going to be a pretty aggressive move as per cause and effect uh one of dow's you know main theories uh we've gone sideways now for three months so we can expect it's now time for price to play catch up with time yeah so generally you can look at the, the trend from here to here yeah and whilst you go sideways it then means time the price has to catch up with time yeah otherwise you leave the trend so that's you can expect it to move pretty quick the longer it goes sideways the faster the move to the upside simple as that um okay so i've explained really this move up to here looking at it as a major wxy certainly nothing impulsive about it i can't see any one two three four five in here really don't see it if you do see it Feel free to put a link in the description, in the comments, rather. And uh, yeah, I'll be happy to take a look. But um, yeah, for me, nothing impulsive about this. Looking at it as very much a very complex pattern up to around 16K. All right. Now, let's just talk about why do I keep talking about 16K? All right. 
So I've explained this in the last couple of videos. Admittedly, they were pretty long videos and I'm sure not all of you would have watched because uh, they were quite long and you don't all have that time to take a look. But I explained it quite thoroughly. So if you do get a chance, have a look at those. Uh, but basically what I look at is the oldest daily blocks. We're on the daily time frame, and it was another reason for 9833 being a key level. Basically we get this, see this red doji right here? Yes, you've got all your green candles going up. This red candle sticks out like a sore thumb. And uh, yeah, basically it's in and around that 9833 mark. So 9846, yeah, if you plot it perfectly, you'll see that 9833 is very key. So another reason why 9833 was very important and why it turned out to be the halfway point. All right, um, so next, where's the next range? It's up here, yeah, so you've got your green candles coming up. Here's your next range. Here's your top, here's your bottom. So we've got the top of it being at 16 point, roughly 16.6 K, yeah? Bottom of it being around 14.5, yeah? So that's our range. Certainly the bottom of it could act as a bit of resistance at 14.6, but I'll explain why I'm looking more at 16.6. .6. If we use Fibonacci, basically, it looks like a much better target. And you know how price often likes to follow Fibonacci. So, Let's bring on Fibonacci. Want to look at it on the linear scale. If we just pull on our Fib, this one. So here's, so if you draw your Fib retracement on the linear scale, it's the best scale to look at uh, Fib retracements. So we pull it from top to bottom. We've obviously come up and tested the 0.618. Next time we go higher, I think 0.786 is a very reasonable target. Yeah. So that sits at $16,144. Yeah, and um, as you can see, very, very close to the top of our range that we were targeting. So very close to that 16.6K, all right? So that's one FIB target, that 0 0.786 level there. Uh, next one to think about is, you have to go on the log scale for this one, uh, because that's better for FIB extensions, which we're about to use now. So I, if I'm obviously looking at this as a WXY up to here, I would be doing our fib extension, plotting it from the bottom here, extending it to the top of this wave, and extending that from this low here. And you can see a very nice one-to-one -one relationship. Where is it? 16.6K, yeah? Very nice relationship. So we've got very nice confluence between fib extensions, fib retracements, and a key horizontal level. So very nice horizontal level of resistance at that point. So regardless of whether you see this as being a major bullish move or part of a big corrective pattern whereby it finds a lot of resistance at this point, either way, this is a take profit level. I think it's very difficult to argue with that. So there's very key FIB levels and there's very key horizontal resistance. What happens with price at that point will determine where it goes from there, obviously, but um, I see it acting as major, major resistance. I'll talk about the major count in a moment that I see it as playing out as. But um, yeah, that's the justification for that 16.6K. All right. Um, so before we talk about the macroscopic count, I want to just first focus on another key horizontal level of resistance. And that was looking at Camarilla pivots. I'm a big fan of Camarilla pivots, as you'll know if you've been watching my channel. So first of all, on the daily, you can see we've completely obliterated the R4. So that, first of all, is another confirmation that we're going into a new trend here, to an upward trend. The rule is generally when you break out of the R4 or the S4, it means that we're showing good strength and developing a trend. All right. Now, but the key one to look out for was on the even higher time frame. That was on the weekly. So if we just expand this a little bit so it's clear. You can see, just looking back, how significant these weekly Camarillas have been. So S4 targeted very nicely here. We had a nice run up. We went through our R3, used it as support, run into the R4. And then we close the, basically on the weekly time frame, the Camarilla pivots act as one year periods. Yeah, so we close beneath our R3. That is weakness. So when we go into the R3 of the next year, it basically acts as a major selling signal. Where does it bounce? S3. So excellent bullish strength coming back in and now we're going above the r3 so this was a major level of resistance to overcome that came in at 10.1k yeah and we are completely obliterated of course we want a weekly close 
above this level to confirm that it is taking it out and it is on its next uh, on its way up to the next key level of resistance which is at 13.1k I think it goes through there pretty comfortably to be honest uh, as I say going on to 16k but so far it looks like it's taking out the R3 very nicely next level of resistance uh, roughly where is it 13 yeah 13k so that's just looking at it from a Camarilla point of view okay so uh, next thing to cover moving averages if we pull on our weekly moving averages you can see we're above absolutely all of them so we got above the 50 week SMA um, and we used it as support I've spoke time and time again about the significance of the 50 week SMA and we were caught in a range between the 9833 very significant level and the 50 week SMA just went sideways and now you can see we're starting our move to the upside here and clearly 50 week SMA is being used as support all right so it looks like we're heading upwards now and if we go on the four hourly just taking off our moving averages I want to show you the pitchforks that we were really monitoring in the group where we discussed which way this market was going to go so um, this was the pitchfork that was key yeah I was look as I say we were looking at this as a WXY so that was your W that was your X and then we we're looking at the Y yeah now it could have played out into a different count but clearly once it broke this upper warning line it confirmed that this counts to the downside that from there to there had finished and the only way I could count it is a WXYXZ that's your WXYXZ yeah it was the break of this upper warning line which highlighted to me that we were going to head higher from here yeah as you can see the break of the upper warning line we went then went sideways and it was at this point it was looking to me I think this is where I flipped my bias originally I was looking at this was going to roll over to the downside it was looking weak failing at 9833 time and time again but getting above this pitchfork was the key indicator for me that this was turning bullish that's when I start put out the uh, the YouTube video that's when I started talking about the Nasdaq looking very strong it was basically all tying in with stocks looking really really strong and completely going against the negative backdrop that COVID has put um, on the economy so yeah I can see this just pushing higher and higher since we broke out of this pitchfork so that's just highlighting the significance of these pitchforks uh, the pitchfork that I am monitoring now is uh, yeah it's this one so basically when I plot my pitchforks I would usually plot them using the first two waves so our first wave to W was from here's your bottom here's your top so first pivot second pivot third pivot is at the end of this X wave yeah and then you can use these uh, pitchfork lines to basically time the run up to your target yeah so certainly I want to see a run in to 16k that's the classic scenario with these pitchforks should 80% of the time they should have a nice run in to the median line you can see if we zoom in right here on this pitchfork we are nice and comfortably above our lower median line a little bit of resistance you can see we tested it three times three or four times even acted as good resistance then we broke it nicely up to the upside I think probably we're going to see a pretty comfortable run up to the median line over a short period of time in my opinion uh, I wouldn't be too surprised to see us at thir 13, 12, 12.5k 12 roughly pretty soon. You can see the 1.5 line here on the pitchfork being very close uh, to the price action where it caught the, the sideways move as price moved higher. Okay, so little, little illustration of the pitchforks that I'm monitoring at this moment in time. Uh, let's just take that one off. Um, now, I think we can start talking about the macroscopic picture okay and this is where people will start getting upset as they did on my last couple of videos people were like oh I love how your your count suggests that we're going to 16k but I don't really like the fact that you say that we go down from there because I do anticipate a big sell-off from this point yeah I'll explain that in a moment but basically when it gets to 16k for me this is all part of one massive correction from here I see a sell-off sub 3k 3.2k where we came down to here I see us targeting probably around 2k yeah I'll, I'll home in on that target later doesn't need to be done now we need to find out how high we go first 
um, before you can start speculating on how low you go. But um, yeah, I'll explain the why I expect yeah I expect that big sell off. So basically, this is all looking like there's no way. For, how can we explain it? So let's go on the linear scale. Yeah. People who are suggesting that 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 the that we're going into an imp this is an impulse and that's a correction and this is another impulse from there. The only way you can really look at it is if you're looking at this as a one, two, three, four, and then this is your fifth, where we've done a one, two. And then we're going into a third, and then we'll have a fourth and a fifth. That's the I suppose that's the the only major count that I can see really. Um, and for that, it basically means you're calling that a wave one and two. And for me, this is not a wave two. Wave twos don't look like this. I've mentioned it in my previous video. Basically, in a wave two, it should shoot down quickly, and then you'll consolidate, and it might come down just as quick, or in a gentle fashion, it'll roll out the, the bottom. But you won't get this gentle rolling up and then a massive shoot sell off to the downside. That's much more classical of a B wave or an X wave, which is how I have it. Yeah, I've got this as a W, an X, and a Y up to here. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing. Next one. Um, which one was it? Okay. The next one that the, the extra bit of information actually came in today. So if we look on the Bitcoin futures chart, Bitcoin futures, massive gap that has been created, glaringly obvious gap. Yeah, you do not want to see a gap develop if you want to see all time highs develop. If you want to see a crazy move to the upside, taking out all time highs, you do not want to see this. Yeah, because gaps have a tendency to get filled. They don't have to get filled straight away. They can take several months to get filled. But if you're calling this a one, two, three, four, five, it's going to take years to fill this gap. Years. And I don't see that happening. Yes, it's a breakaway gap. Yeah, and they do happen. You can see it happened here. But how long did it last? Yeah, talking a couple of months. Again, happened here. How long did it last? A couple of months. Yeah, so they do happen. Yeah doesn't mean we have to fill it straight away the next day or anything like that it's a breakaway gap uh, if you want to learn about breakaway gaps i have done a free lecture on it um in it's on my free material on wave618.com links to wave618.com are in the description to this video so if you want to check that out it's free material so yeah by all means check it out i talk about gaps it's in the candlesticks um pdf that i made so yeah, so this is a breakaway gap. Often they don't have to get filled straight away, unlike area gaps, which should get filled straight away. So yeah, this is not what something you want to see if you are expecting much higher moves. So basically, it's, it's just the play out. It, it, this looks very, very um, much like a B or an X wave. All right, going back to Bitcoin. Yeah, so basically, it looks a lot more linear as a, uh, a zigzag move up to here and then a move down. I know that's probably what not what people want to hear. I know. So it is painful to take in. And I'm happy to accept that it may be wrong because technical analysis is all about speculation. But for me to be wrong, what I'd want to see is price move above 16.6K. And I have no doubt that it will retest that level before going higher. So if that happens, I'll be jumping on it as a long position. But I don't see it happening. I do not see that happening. Uh, but it does not matter. It doesn't change anything. Yeah, whether you're, whether you see Bitcoin go into 20k, 16k, 30k, it doesn't matter. Once it reaches 16.6k, that is a take profit level. Yeah, there's so many levels of resistance at that point. Yeah, so it just you know if you're if you're expecting all time highs above 20k, then you just take less profit. Simple as that. But in my opinion, you'll be throwing money away because I expect a big sell off at that point. But we'll see how it plays out. Obviously, as more information comes in, we might be able to adjust that. Uh, if you do disagree with this, uh, there's no point just saying I can't see it happening. That doesn't help anyone. Um, give you justification for why you see this as being some massive 
uh, move where we see huge all-time highs here on Bitcoin. Uh, be very interested to hear that. Uh, but the, the I suppose the third and last reason for why I see this as corrective is because the stock market cannot just keep going higher forever. I believe all this move up to the upside is very much correlated with the stock markets. I'm just going to pull up NASDAQ for a moment now where we've discussed it. I discussed this at length in my last two videos. Well, it was not the last video, the video before that where I covered literally Bitcoin and NASDAQ. It's in the thumbnail. Uh, check out that video if you want more justification about what stocks are doing. Yeah, because I go into it in a lot of detail there. Basically, in fact, forget the NASDAQ, forget NASDAQ. Let's look at the Dow on the monthly time frame. Yeah, and I want to look at it on the linear. I, I've mentioned this time and time again, but I can't stress enough. Look at this. This cannot just continue going up higher and higher forever. Literally, we're going this final leg is literally going to be vertical. Yeah. I see it maybe tagging 30k and then it's tumbling down from there. Yeah, and I'm looking at a run into the US election before it tumbles. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm basically coinciding the move up in Bitcoin to 16k with that play up in stocks. Yeah, but to see this just continuing higher and higher, it, do, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, we've seen basically 11 years of expansion in the economy here. So basically from here to here, so from here, 6k, We've gone from 6K to 30K in 11 years. Yeah. And don't forget the history of the stock markets, the, the New York Stock Exchange is 230 years old. So it's gone from zero to where did it come up to here? It came up to 14K in 220 years. And then in the following 11 years, so it, it got up to 14, it basically it's gone up twice as high in the last 11 years. It's actually gone from six through to 30 so it's 24k versus 14k yeah it's almost done double in the last 11 years what it had done in the preceding 220 years that's how ridiculous this is i don't think i'm really i'm i can't stress enough how ridiculous this is yeah and it's just not sustainable as much as it looks nice and you can imagine it just going vertical and vertical and literally leaving the chart. Um, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And uh, I believe there's a big threat to the stocks come the next US election. Um, so, yeah, sure. If, um, if you think Bitcoin is going to keep flying higher, then um, then you're basically betting on the stock market just literally going off the scale to the upside, which I do think it will do over the next three months. But... I think it stops there. Um, not going to go too much into that in this video. We'll be going off too much at a tangent. As I say, check out my video from a couple of videos back where I go into it in detail. So I'm not going to dwell too much. The video is probably dragging on. Um, but yeah, in the group, we basically talk about um, all the different alts, top 15 alts, because they will be plotting some good setups. Admittedly, Bitcoin is probably one of the better setups of uh, the top 15 uh, market caps. But some of the alts will be setting up very, very nicely. Some of them are already making good moves. And um, yeah, once this big move has been missed down here, there are opportunities to get in later. And that's why we'll, we do regular updates within the group and try and keep a track of that. If you want information about the group, uh, links are in the description to this video. If you want to learn about trading, I, I have my course. And again, links to, uh, to that are within the description to this video. But that said, I think we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, well, one thing to mention, be very cautious because this is the kind of thing that happens when volatility comes in. Yeah, you can see we tagged our high for the day, 10,950. Yeah, and then look how much we came down, $500 down to 10,450. Yeah, literally a $500 move down. Yeah, so lots of people will be jumping in here and literally getting uh, liquidated pretty, pretty fast. Yeah, so you've got to look at these corrections carefully about when to jump in. Yeah, because obviously the best place to get in was prior to the break of 9833. That was the key level that we had our eyes on, and that is now broken. Um, all right, I think we're going to wrap it up there, guys. So I hope that has been of use. Leave a like if you found it useful. Any comments, as pop them down. 
in the comments below and um yeah hopefully we'll be updating you again soon all right guys take care